Is Cardano completely worthless? Should you go ahead and sell it right now? Well, this research firm, as they call themselves, K33, believes that is the case. And as a part of today's video, I want to put out some counter arguments as to why they're completely wrong. So if you guys missed this particular article, it was released earlier today. Super crazy. Um, just the narrative around what Cardano is doing and why Cardano is not going to get any adoption and why you as an investor in the Cardano community should actually go ahead and sell your ADA. So let's just go ahead and jump right on in. I definitely think this is a bias hit piece and I want to break down exactly why that is. So it starts off by stating the Cardano network's complete lack of meaningful activity will make the ADA token worthless over time. Scrolling down a little bit further, it states a smart contract network needs meaningful use for its native token to have any sort of value. The Cardano network, however, has no meaningful use or credible track to actually go ahead and get it. That couldn't be any further from the truth there. Um, as we're going to jump into the actual remaining portion of this article here, I want to just quickly start off by saying that right now, obviously you can transact with Cardano on the network. It is relatively new, right? So we're, we don't have the amount of dApps that other networks have, but that's going to be one of the first use cases, right? Just to transact amongst ourselves within our own ecosystem. Number two is going to be staking, you know, ADA, is one of the most decentralized networks right now as it stands with over 28 or 2,900 different validators on the network. Over 60% of that circulating supply um, actively staked to stake pool operators, making this particular network the most decentralized. I'm going to jump into some facts here because, again, I don't want to just speak. I want to be able to back this up with facts and with credible counter arguments. And then last but not least, we have SIP number 1694 on the way, which is gonna give the power of Cardano back over into the community's hands. And that's gonna allow for the community to basically decide the path and direction that we wanna go ahead and kind of steer forward in terms of growth, evolution, adoption, partnerships, etc. So those are just a couple of the initial use cases for Cardano. Of course, you still have dApps building on Cardano. Of course, you can utilize your ADA within those dApps. And there's just so many other ways to utilize Cardano that it just seems super crazy to me that this particular article would just open up by saying that Cardano has no validity or no utility. Let's break down a couple more sections, and then I want to jump into some of my counter arguments, as well as some of the facts that I pulled up here for this particular article. So jumping back in, it states that there's no proof of Cardano actually being used by anything. So it states there's nothing going on in the Cardano network other than exchanges or exchange transfers in a group of back holders fabricating, fabricating blockchain activity. How can we know this? There's no outside proof of anything going on. So just even some of the language they're using here, right? Calling us back holders, saying that we're fabricating blockchain activity. This just goes to show that this is not a professional firm putting out a professional article. Again, this seems like a complete hit piece to me just based off of how it's written, how it opens up by saying that Cardano's worthless and even just in the title asking if we should sell our Cardano. So that was one of the first things I picked up on this particular hit piece here was just the language that they put out there for any credible platform to put out a piece like this um, would be astonishing in this particular day and age. So I give this particular platform no credibility. They asked Charles Hoskins, and if you'd ever heard of K33, Charles said, you know, who are they essentially? Basically highlighting the fact that like this piece came out of nowhere by a potential firm maybe looking to just get eyes or a reaction out of the Cardano community. As you guys are probably aware, anytime there's a poll for Cardano, the community shows up in full force. And the same can be said when there's FUD that comes at the community as well, right? So there's been a lot of people coming out vocally about this. And, you know, there's this phrase now where good publicity, bad publicity, it's always good, right? It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. As long as it's publicity, it's good to bring out a brand. Now, again, I'm not sure what K33's intentions are with this, but touching back to the article, the way that they're wording a lot of this seems really, really suspect to me personally. Now, they break down that we're also fabricating blockchain activity with no proof. So if we were fabricating blockchain activity, why don't they show exactly what is actually being fabricated? Um, again, a lot of the Cardano in circulation is already staked to a stake pool. That doesn't mean that you can't utilize it. That's actually one of the benefits that we have in Cardano is liquid staking. But I would like to see more facts here than just some of these big words um, and some of these big accusations being done on Cardano or being thrown at Cardano. 
So it states that because there's nothing going on or because they believe that there's nothing going on to the public outside, that there must be nothing going on on the inside. Now, it continues to read, the best example of lack of activity is probably the stablecoin situation on Cardano. I want to take a break here and just highlight that, yes, Cardano is in dire need of a stablecoin. There's been more and more talk about USDC being utilized or potentially even USDT. I think that this particular firm basically got a wind that the Cardano community was talking a lot about this and they try to use this to our detriment in a couple of sentences or in a couple of um, paragraphs later which I also want to touch on now to be completely fair we do have less stable coins than a lot of other ecosystems but when you look at the Cardano TVL compared to other ecosystems as well Cardano is outpacing them in just the general trend you take a look at Ethereum nowhere near the amount of TVL that they had when you go back to the top of the bull run when you take a look at Avalanche Solana Injective these are all the platforms that they're going to be comparing Cardano against none of them have the general trend which is an appreciation of TVL or an increase in TVL that Cardano is currently showing right now on the network. So I do want to give them that point right there that Cardano does need a stable coin, but that isn't the only thing that we need, right? Again, a stable coin doesn't make or break a particular ecosystem. Bitcoin was able to get to the point where it's at right now without a complete um, stable coin launching on it, right? So a stable coin is great. Yes, it brings liquidity, it brings adoption, but it's not ever a guarantee either. So I did want to quickly go ahead and state that as well. Jumping back into the article, it states, no USDT or USDC in the network generally means that no DeFi occurs and that Tether and Circle attest to this because if something was going on, then there would issue stable coins there. I think they've completely missed the point. The ethos and the direction and just the amount of control that USDT has and USDC has, right, with respect to um, clawbacks, with respect to freezing assets, with respect to blacklisting, those are things that they're not going to get away with on Cardano. I've released three or four videos in the past week and a half touching on the fact that that is the biggest hurdle right now as to why the community is so split on utilizing or in integrating something like USDT or USDC. We don't want to give up on our morals. So it's not the fact that there's nothing going on. So USDC doesn't want to come to Cardano. It's the fact that they're not going to be able to keep the same amount of control, the same amount of access that they currently have with some of these EVM networks. On top of that, it's not going to be easy to integrate into Cardano's extended UTXO model. So keep in mind that it's not just the fact that there um, is um, lower activity on Cardano compared to some of these chains that have been around longer. There's other reasons as to why those platforms haven't come into the ecosystem. Now, I also want to highlight, we do have versions of USDT, USDC, and DAI through the use of the wine chain bridge. So even though they're not native, we do have those assets in the event that you want to go ahead and utilize them here on Cardano. Moving over into the article, the only stable coins that exist are 20 million of Cardano collateralized stablecoins valued at 76 cents to the dollar or another word for nothing. Again, just the, the way that they word this just goes to show their complete lack of understanding of what's going on here. But then their um, stance when it comes to how they view Cardano stating that literally there's nothing going on here. We've had multiple reports released by Masari highlighting the fact that Cardano is continuing to grow. Um, it's not as quickly as some of these other networks, but it is growing nonetheless. And again, I'm excited to jump into some of the facts that I have in order to present, in order to rebut some of these accusations. Now, to be fully transparent, yes, we don't have as many stable coins as other competing networks. But if you take into the fact that USDC is able to quickly launch on any EVM compatible network because they've already done so on big platforms like Ethereum, that makes it that much easier for them to get adoption um, from USDC and USDC when new networks launch. So, for example, you take a look at Avalanche. They've got more stablecoins in Cardano, but they're also an EVM-based network. You take a look at Solana. They've got more stablecoins, but they're also an EVM-based network. And again, they have some of the drawbacks, which include freezing of assets, clawbacks, and blacklisting that we're trying to avoid here on Cardano. Here on Cardano, we're aiming to get something like USDM, which is going to be fiat-backed with Without the clawbacks, without the freezing, without the blacklisting, and that's all going to be behaving as a Cardano native token with its own fiat on-ramp and off-ramp, which basically makes it the Cardano version 
of USDC. So while we're not conforming to what they want, right, which is to basically say, hey, if we have USDT and we have USDC, that means that we actually have something building here. Number one, again, the fact that we don't have USDT or USDC or the fact that we do have it doesn't necessarily equate to us getting guaranteed liquidity. We also don't need USDCs or USDCs stamp of approval to show that we have stuff building here on Cardano. We have over. Let me just quickly pull this up because, again, I haven't jumped into my um, responses yet, but let's just take a look at just how the Cardano community has grown in the last year. Shout out to Chris o here for putting these two charts together. At the top, we have January 12th of 2024. And at the bottom, we've got one year ago where we had 112 projects. We now have over 156 now. We had over 1,100 builders. We now have over 1,300 builders. And then we had a um, total of 5,000 Pluto scripts, right, or smart contracts, where we now have over 21,000 Plutus smart contract. So you do the math there, you know, take a look at these numbers. Again, the data doesn't lie, but for somebody who wants to spin up a narrative, it's easy for them to just, you know, take a look and just say these, these blatant things or these super general things about the growing ecosystem. Again, you take a look at Cardano and you compare that to some of these other networks. Um, for example, Ethereum. Ethereum's had multiple cycles to get to the point that it has. Cardano hasn't had as much time to be adopted. And again, they're taking that slow and rigorous approach to make sure that we cut once, or excuse me, measure twice and cut once. As an example, take a look at Ethereum staking. Started off as proof of work, and then halfway through realized that, hey, we maybe want to go ahead and actually switch over to proof of stake. That took them, I don't know how many years to go ahead and actually implement. Cardano launched out of the gate with proof of stake, with liquid staking, and without slashing. You know, these are things that you still have right now on ETH. You still have slashing. You have centralization of the actual node operators and a few other things going on there as well. And that's actually going to take me to this next point here, which is going to be that, again, Cardano is going to be the most decentralized network right now compared to all of the other peers that they're going to be mentioning in this article. So if I jump back in here, it states that right now, we take a look at Avalanche, Cardano, Near, Solana, and Aptos, which the K33 article does compare us against. Cardano has the most validators, and this is from about a year ago. Um, so at that point, Cardano had 2,500 um, stake pool operators. We now have almost 3,000. The only network that was relatively close was Solana with 1,800 validators. And as you guys know, right, this particular network continues to go down, continues to require restarts, and their inflation policy is not sustainable. You know, so it doesn't necessarily make sense. However, somehow it's been the one that's been pumping the most, right? Even after the news about Sam Bankman Freed, him manipulating Solana, him taking funds from FTX, the coin or the token continues to pump. So that lets me know, you know, where the VC interests lie. And to kind of touch that back to the article, K33, their founders also have ties back to TradFi as well. So it doesn't surprise me as as um, it doesn't come to me as a surprise that they're against Cardano, the most decentralized blockchain, the one taking the time to actually do this right, as opposed to some of these cash cows, which I'll give it to them. They do pump harder than Cardano, at least right now. But however, when you take a look at their fundamentals, they don't actually come anywhere near close. So with respect to that, it's not just that Cardano has the most validators. If you take a look here, Cardano has 17% of the validators um, being self-hosted, right? If you take a look at any of these other networks, that we have Avalanche, only 6% are self-hosted, Near only 3%, Solana, only 6%, and then Aptos, um, around 1%. Now, if you take a look at some of the biggest names, right, which basically make them a little bit more centralized. We have AWS or Amazon Web Services, right, with Aptos 40%. We've got um, Solana with 5.7%, Near 13%, Cardano 16%, and then Avalanche 40%. So Cardano, not only with the highest number of validators, also with the highest number of self-hosted nodes. So I wanted to go ahead and bring that out here as well. Okay, let's jump back into the, into the article here. And then there's a couple of things I want to go ahead and quickly highlight. So as they continue to bash Cardano, they state that the network stable coin value relative to our market cap is basically non-existent. Again, we don't have 
the big dogs, right? Which is completely fine. We're building them here on our own. But once we do, you can definitely expect these numbers to start to move around. So what they show here is the fact that Ethereum, um, obviously the one that's been here longest after Bitcoin, has a 25% value relative to their market cap of the ETH token, followed by Avalanche, Solana, Near Injective, and then Cardano at zero. But okay, let's take a look at it this way. Yes, Ethereum has a lot more liquidity. It's been around a lot longer. So has Solana, so has Avalanche, Near Injective. But let's take a look at how much issues they've had with respect to actual security, right? And then also with respect to hacks. So if we take a look at this here, this breaks down some of the hacks that took place and on, on what networks they took place. So very similarly, just like on that previous chart I showed you, right, with stablecoin liquidity, Ethereum comes in as the number one ecosystem with blockchain hacks, right? So we have here over $635 million being stolen from the community, followed by guess who? Correct. Solana with $400 million being taken, followed by the Binance Smart Chain. And then we have other, and then we have Polygon with 13 million and Phantom with 5 million. So do you notice a trend here? Cardano's not here either. So again, it's how you want to look at it. If you want to go ahead and rag on Cardano and say that we don't have stable coins, cool, go ahead and say that. But we also don't have millions of dollars being exploited from the community. And that comes from the slow and steady and meticulous approach that IOG has pushed since day one. That's what I love about Cardano. They took the time to think about the entire roadmap from day one before actually executing. And it's now showing right in other areas that this particular report didn't highlight. So my question to K33 is, why didn't you raise the point about the fact that Cardano has no hacks? You know, again, these are the narratives that they want you to focus on. They, they want to skew the numbers. They want to take areas where Cardano is still building in, and they want to put that and compare that to blockchains that are much older. You can't expect the younger brother to come and be able to pick up as much weight as the older brother who's been in the gym, lifting the weights, putting in the reps. That's exactly what's going on. They're comparing Cardano, who's just finally hitting maturity, to fully grown networks that have been around for years on end. So if we take a look here again, um, when you look at uh, blockchain related um, issues, right, just by number, we have the ETH ecosystem coming in number three with 18 different hacks um, that took place there, followed by BSC, Solana, Phantom, and then at the very bottom, we've got Polygon or Matic. So jumping back in here, it's interesting that this particular graph overall with Cardano at zero basically holds up when you take a look at some of the issues and hacks which have taken place within the crypto and Web3 space. Scrolling down a little bit here, we're coming towards the very end. It states, Cardano also has an enticing story for newcomers, which is why Cardano is currently worth $19 billion, with Cardano being branded as the peer-reviewed research-driven blockchain network. It's not just a brand. I mean, we're living by it again iog with our hard forks um, we have had we have not had any issues they've all been seamless um, i know that you know we had the uh, vassal hard fork that was one of the biggest hard forks that had taken place so far in cardano we've got the chang hard fork coming up here and there's and there's never any worries about any of these um big transitions these big updates that come to the network whereas on other networks when you begin to talk about hard forks you have to be careful not to basically um, wreck the entire chain. And so with Cardano's Hark Fork Combinator, which basically makes it a very simple process, there's no additional spin-off token that's created. Again, this goes to show that IOG was forward thinking and looking at all the other networks around us before actually implementing things that they did on Cardano. If we take a look at the very last thing that they talk about here, it's basically going to be the drawdown or the value and price of Cardano compared to Ethereum, Solana, and AVAX. So Ethereum, again, down 30, Solana down 44%, um, AVAX 50%, and Cardano 77%. What's interesting is that these are all going to be chains within the top five or six. And of course, Cardano's at the very end of that five or six, right? So it doesn't surprise me that Cardano's down 77%. Within the crypto space where we have over, you know, 20, 30,000 crypto tokens, you can find a lot of tokens that are down more than 77%. So it's funny that they only paint the picture here with the three or four tokens that are performing better than Cardano right now. 
And again, price is lagging indicator. Charles has mentioned this plenty of times before, right? That the value of an asset is always going to lag as people begin to find out what's actually being built on the actual network. So I wanted to highlight that there. So if I jump back over here, um, we did talk about the fact that as it stands right now, yes, Cardano um, does have a lot going on, but I want to just go ahead and just also compare the total number of projects that are launched on Cardano versus some of these competitors that they were highlighting in that particular article. So it states your Ethereum has a 1,000 and four protocols currently live. Polygon has 500, Avalanche has 300, and then down here we only have Cardano with 33. Now, I'm not sure exactly how they're counting these because that report that I showed earlier from Chris O, which does come from the Cardano Foundation, highlighted that Cardano right now has over 100 projects launched on the network. But if we're using the data here on DeFi Llama, you know, theoretically speaking, we have Polygon uh, with over, that's what, 10, maybe 15x more projects building on the network. Avalanche with over 10x more projects than Cardano right now. So it doesn't surprise me that they have um, kind of a leg up on ADA right now. But that doesn't mean that we don't have anything building here and that you should actually sell your Cardano. So the last thing I want to just go ahead and just quickly highlight is the fact that we have builders building on the ecosystem. It's interesting that the K33 article didn't highlight a single builder. They only talked about the Cardano native token or the Cardano token, which I kind of view as like the, the base layer, the infrastructure. It's the tool provider, you know, but it's really going to be all these protocols building on top of Cardano that are going to get us to that finish line. They're going to be the ones that continue to give us utility and additional use cases that really kind of open up this um, crypto space to the entire world. For example, we have Empower um, providing homes in Africa. We have World Mobile providing internet connections um, and just telecom communications to the entire world. We have platforms, for example, like LenFi, allowing people to be their own bank. We've got platforms like Indigo, bringing synthetic assets to the entire uh, community. We have so many protocols here, right? We've even got gaming platforms. We've got um, Cornucopius. We've got Zengate. We've got endcoins for privacy. You know, this is where the use case and the utility for Cardano really come in. And so as we begin to get scaling, as we begin to get faster, more growth, more adoption, I think that we're going to see people's tune really beginning to change when it comes to Cardano as a whole. So that will do it here for today's video. Somewhat of a rant. But I wanted to rebut this particular article that came out from K33. I think it's completely unfair how they stated this. And it's completely unfair how they basically try to spin this off as some sort of hit piece for the Cardano community. So I by no means will be selling any of my ADA. If anything, I'll be buying more as some of these people try to FUD Cardano in order to persuade the broader blockchain community to invest in things, for example, like Solana, etc. So obviously it's up to you, do your own due diligence. I'm not telling you what to buy. I'm not telling you to hold Cardano. That's just what I'm doing. But I wanted to go ahead and provide some facts to argue or to um, serve as a counter argument to the recent article released by K33. So if you guys found any portion of today's video to be helpful, I'd appreciate you. If you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by DAP Central and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me surrounding anything we chatted about or about the K33 article, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.